everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Plays of Binding of Isaac. Afterbirth Plus. Afterbirth Plus is finally here. What? He knows the meme? He knows the meme! The meme was that I didn't change my video description for a long time. So even years after Afterbirth Plus's release, it said Afterbirth Plus is finally here. P230 FAJB. There's a modest degree of spice, but the spice coefficient is somewhat low. We have great stats from a DPS standpoint. Adequate HP, starting with five bombs, is amazing. Remote detonator, I could take it or leave it, but five bombs is awesome. Okay, hold on, hold on. You gotta use your noggin here, okay? There's no reason not to take remote detonator. Like, in my head, I think I thought if I let go of it, I would lose the bombs. Obviously, oh my god. <laughs> we win! Okay, I mean, not necessarily, but it's a very, very, very strong start. Uh, to the extent that I even said no to HP, and Magic Finger is also not very good, but 2020 is. My lord. Okay. Incredible. Amazing. So this is a really, this is a solid start. Obviously, and by solid, I mean, uh, essentially both our offense and defense are completely sorted for us immediately. Um, a loss, and I, I'm inviting this evil into my life just to keep things interesting, but a loss is essentially unfathomable as of this present moment. Really, I mean, the most fragile moments for any run, it's like a flight, you know? Take off and landing. Take off is pretty much set. Landing, you never know. Sometimes the Zane coefficient gets a little high. It messes with things, but uh, it, it is tough to imagine this one going south. No doubt about that. It's one of the rare times a golden key is not worth a single bomb. You know what is, though? A bomb is worth a bomb. As long as you got a little time to spare. Uh, nothing else, though. Let's head down to the next floor. As mentioned, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Not much is new. I've, uh, I've got little, uh, I mean, I've had this for a couple of days. I know I've been mentioning that things have been going well, uh, during self-isolation. It's true. Um, like, I'm, mental health-wise, I'm still pretty jazzed. Turns out that, like, self-isolation, well, I mean, it's not really self-isolation because I'm here with Kate, but, you know, like, one household isolation, um, is, is probably a mental health debuff, but, like, getting the news that you're gonna be a parent is, like... It's like when you enter a golden age in civilization, and then, like, somebody steals a great artist or something like that. You're like, ah, whatever. <laughs> I know enough about Civ that I could at least make a metaphor. I don't know if it was coherent, but an attempt was made nonetheless. But I'm starting to get... I wouldn't call it stir-crazy, but a little bit like... You know, I could use a little outdoor time, I'll admit. But I think you just gotta try new things. Like, yesterday, you know... One of the things that's that's interesting about... I, I don't know if this is true for... I, I assume every pregnancy is different. But... Uh, so I, I don't know if this is a universal experience. But my wife, even though she's uh, 13 weeks pregnant, morning sickness usually starts to taper off around now, apparently. I'm an expert now because I've read the books. Um, basically a doctor, in case anybody's looking for advice. Um, but she's still got it, like, pretty bad. So, usually around, like, late afternoon, I'll ask her, I'm like, hey, what are you feeling for dinner? You know, I know your sense of taste and sense of smell is really particular right now. There's usually a pretty narrow window. So, yesterday, she was like, I want, uh, like, Japanese curry. And I was like, that's not a problem. We, we keep curry stuff, like, you know, around. Um, and I, I know how to cook it, obviously. It's not very complicated if you use, like, a, a curry uh, seasoning pack, which we do, because... You know, I'm not running a restaurant. <laughs> Some foods, like, that's resin. But I'll tell you, I, I remember I read once that uh, Mario Batali, you know, he's an iron chef. His little chef hack secret was that he, he even he uses bullion cubes. I'll tell you, there's a lot of elitism on the internet. I Don't take this the wrong way, Babish. I think it comes from uh, really, really good food YouTubers who make everything from scratch. We even, like, Kate was losing her mind, as we mentioned uh, on stream once, that we eat kimchi fairly frequently, because we eat it with, like, all of our Korean meals. Um, 
And so many people were like, why don't you just make your own? You know you can just make your own kimchi. Why don't you just make your own kimchi? And I, and I was, you know, I've heard a lot of venting. And I also agree, because, you know, I know a lot of Korean people in Vancouver as a result of Kate and Kate's family. None of them make their own kimchi. 100% buy kimchi from the Korean grocery store and keep it in the fridge. Meanwhile, people online are like, it's pre pretty simple. Like, all you do is you get some... Uh, Cabbage and uh, some, they always say gochujang, which is funny because it's gochujang, but anyway. Or you just, just a little bit of red wine vinegar and cabbage, and I'm like, that's not the same. Anyway, she was like, I want some Japanese curry. And I was like, all right, I can make that. So I made it. After I made it, she was like, it's not your fault, but what sounded delicious to me at 6 p.m., now the idea of it, the mere whiff of the scent of this curry makes me want to throw up. So I think I'm just going to, like, have a bunch of apples or something like that. And I'm like, okay. So, you know, I, I've, I've had that happen a lot recently. I'm not frustrated with it at all because, you know, I, I actually like to cook. People have suggested that maybe I'm learning to cook because I'm having a child. I learned to cook in university because it was more fun than going to class. You didn't hear that from me. Um, so some of those skills are still locked in the brain. Just because I once ate... A hard shell taco with shredded cheese on it, microwaved, does not mean I don't appreciate a good gourmet meal. Um, so I've cooked a lot of meals recently that my wife is like, I, I want this. And then after I cook it, she's like, it smells like garbage. <laughs> it's the hormones fault. It's not her fault. If anything, I feel bad for her because she would love to eat it, but instead is, you know, gated by mother nature. It's a cruel thing, pregnancy. Hard on me, too, in some ways, that I can't think of right now. Actually, it's been relatively easy. Just doing more chores. <laughs> um, oh, come lighten up. What am I going to... I can't, I can't shoulder any more of the burden. The science hasn't invented it yet. Anyway. So I ended up, like... I took, like, some short videos of the meal, and I posted them on TikTok, and, you know... That's, that's how bored I am now. I'm like, ah, maybe, like, some... I'm not going to make a cooking video on YouTube because, like, the standards on YouTube are much higher than they are on other platforms, to be honest. I'm not competing with Babish. Are you crazy? My man's making his own naan bread, and the video's titled, like, Simple Naan Bread Recipe. He's like, well, first what you got to do is plant the crops. And I'm like, really? This is madness. Um, but I'll do a little crampy one on TikTok or something like that. Even if it gets no traction, I was just like, man, it gives me something to do. <laughs> That's that's where I'm at. My God, he's losing it. You can tell I'm going a little stir crazy. Not a lot, but a little stir crazy because I'm actually enjoying posting on social media. That's that's the nugget of uh, that's the punchline to that joke to to wrap it all together. What am I gonna do? Talk about Isaac? I mean, we're crushing it here. Lemon mishap. Ha ha. No. Clicker. Ha ha. No. I'm not even using it once. I'm. Just to be straight up with you. Isaac's Tears? No thank you. Marked. Wow. I don't know... I mean, we're, we're still fine. But I don't know if I've ever seen a more dubious collection of four items in a row. I don't even remember the first one. We got Isaac's Tears, a Lemon Mishap, Clicker, and Marked. <laughs> I hear you, by the way. I hear the Isaac Scholars out there. Marked is good. It's a tears upgrade. Yeah, it took us from seven to six. Not that meaningful of a change. Um, not that I... I mean, that's the best part of it, don't get me wrong. But not that meaningful of a change. Uh, and then on top of that, I've lost the ability uh, to just rely on my cerebellum and my muscle memory and my... Uh, all of my learned skills with uh, in the Binding of Isaac and now have to rely on uh, constantly adjusting this crosshair. So I, I personally would rather have 16% slower rate of fire, but have all of the patterns locked into my brain actually provide me with some relevance. I mean, that was a pretty sick orbital dodge though. You got to admit. Although tempted, not tempted enough. I think I'm better off having the bombs. Really, like, here's the thing. A bomb is going to do more for us than a fly will. Yikes. 
mean, not yikes. I, I shouldn't be yikesing. In this position, we do not yikes. From this position, I can relax. NL, was that a sneaky little LCD sound system reference? Yes, it was. What did you think of their most recent album? Oh, you mean This Is Happening, which came out in 2010? The most recent LCD s sound system album I'm familiar with? Loved it. Thought it was, you know, one of my... I don't know what decade you'd put it in, honestly, but whatever decade you put it in, it's one of my favorites of that decade. Especially 2010 to 2020, or 2010 to 2019, because I only listened to like four albums that came out over that time period. But, uh... Oh, I mean, come on, like, uh, Dance Yourself Clean, Drunk Girls. Wait, no, I, no, that's right. These are all right. Oh, Home? These are some, some truly classic songs on there. Uh, I Can Change. I, I will say... I... It's tough, but I think I gotta say Sound of Silver is still a, a better album. I, I think it's partly because it came out at like a more formative time in my life. You know, when I was like 18 versus when I was 21, I guess. Um, but I mean, Sound of Silver, Someone Great is an amazing song. And of course, you know, All My Friends has gone on to become kind of like a, a classic. I was going to say a modern classic, but I guess it is like, you know, 14 years old at this point. Anyway, sorry, I got lost in the sauce temporarily. I know a lot about the things, like, the music that I know a lot about. It's just that people are like, Hey, what do you think of, uh, Tyler the Creator's new album? And I'm like, I listened to one song on YouTube in 2011. And I was like, this is pretty good. And then never listened to any of them ever again. So I couldn't in good conscience give you an answer. I've been thinking about streaming that Dua Lipa album, Future Nostalgia. It has been described as a slightly more than 30 minute slice of pure pop greatness. But I don't know. I'll have to I'll have to run it by my manager first. Make sure it's make sure it's worth my time. <laughs> I don't know I do know that one Dua Lipa song. I know I've got new rules, I find them. I believe rule one is don't pick up the phone. He only calls you up when he's drunk and alone. Two, don't, don't be his friend. Is, you'll thank me when you wake up in his bed again. Three, don't you, don't you, you know, is, um, that. four, if you, if you get with him, you ain't getting over him. Something like that. Look, I mean, considering my age and my musical tastes, I think to know 2.5 of Dua Lipa's four new rules is relatively... Impressive. I'm sure I got some of them wrong. I've maintained, look, I... I watched half of Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve when I still had a lot of optimism about 2020. <laughs> we were so naive then, and, uh... I, I left impressed with merely two performances. I said this on January 1st, and I'll say it now. Only two performances on that show had any kind of electricity and life to them whatsoever. One of them was BTS, and I am not a K-pop fan, necessarily. I, I mean, I'm not a... I have listened to K-pop in the past, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not like a, I'm not a stan, let's put it that way. Um, I left impressed. I was like, these, these boys have got a lot of talent, and they put on one heck of a performance. The other one was Dua Lipa. I was like, you know, this young lady, She's got, a, she's got a real talent for performing. That's a boomer's take on the current state of pop music. Everybody else, take them or leave them. <laughs> but Dua Lipa and BTS, you can hang. That's the best I can do. Or the least I can do? I don't know. To be honest, I'm even more out of touch with pop culture, radio-wise at least, because the only time I would ever listen to the radio is when I was, like, you know, driving or, you know, driving to the gym in particular. And even then, here's my flow chart for radio goes like this. I got four stations I actually listen to dialed into my radio. One of them I only use when I'm, I have to drive when a Canucks game is on. Um, 
So, you know, that most of the time that's not an option, obviously. Because I'll level with you. I like listening to sports on the radio. Um, I do. I, I prefer TV, obviously. But the radio is like a... It's second. Maybe not even a close second, but second nonetheless. I just want it to be known. It might appear like I'm making a mistake here. I'm actually choosing to take Burnt Penny. I don't think we need the HP. I'd rather have more bombs. I want this to be known. I am not doing this under duress. I am in control of my actions and thoughts. Um, but then... I really, really do not like sports radio when it's not broadcasting a game. Like, I feel like it suffers from the same thing that, like, 24-hour news networks suffer from, which is, like, I don't have a problem with watching, like, the nightly news, and it's an hour long. You know, you learn what's happening in an hour, the most important stories, and the ones most applicable to your local community. But when you have to have 24 hours of news and it becomes kind of like the entertainment business, that's where I'm like, eh, I feel like this is a little toxic. Not everyone might agree on that, but I, I do think that will be a popular opinion, to be honest. I think that I'm not going to take much heat for that. Um, in fact, I, w I would even go a step further. And keep in mind, I was kind of... I wouldn't say I was there for, like, the birth of 24-hour news networks, but, like... Well, I, I'm coming from a place of bias, for sure, because, you know, it was the age that I grew up in. I really thought, like, it was, like, the early to mid-2000s where 24-hour news became, like, insanely popular. But ever since, you know, even when I was a teenager, I kind of got the vibe that, like, and I'm not, a, I'm not one of those guys who's like, the media are not real journalists. Not at all. I want to make that clear at the start so there's no risk of misinterpretation here. But I, I do sort of get the vibe from some of the 24-hour news networks that they, uh, they do benefit from making you think that if you're not watching the news, you're not being an informed citizen. Um, and I think it is important to be aware of what's happening in the world, but simultaneously, I, I think that... For a certain type of people, they get addicted to, like... They feel compelled to watch the news because it almost feels productive, you know? Like, I, I'm trying to think about how to phrase this, and I've, I've bounced across, like, so many different topics. I apologize for that, but, um... Like, I, you know, in the same way, like, there are people who consume, like, endless amounts of motivational content, like... You know, they post on Instagram all the time. And I'm not hating on these people, cause, especially because, you know, Dan and I run a podcast that is kind of motivational. Um, it, to some extent, at least. But, uh, you know, they'll post all these comments, inspirational quotes, you know, hustle 24-7 stuff on Instagram. But they don't actually, like, do the stuff that they're talking about. Or they think, like, ah, if I just read, like, one more book or listen to, like, one more podcast, that's going to give me the tools that I need um, to get there. You know? Um, I feel like that's kind of, for a certain type of in individual, a certain type of personality, that's how they feel about the news. They're like, it gives you the simulated feeling of being productive or, like, of of being helpful or at least you know hey you know at least i'm not watching trash tv i'm watching the news it's actually teaching me something whereas i'm like e i think you'd be much better off watching the news like once a day and then doing something that makes you happy for the rest of the time but it's easy for me to say that i'm not trying to besmirch those people regardless where was i going with this <laughs> Again, I got no problem with the news. It's only like, like, CBC, Vancouver. It's the nightly news. In today's news, you know, and they got like 60 minutes of content. When it's like, it's 4.13 p.m. Here's, you know, news on the wire with a unicyclist on a tightrope. And I'm like, is this, are we still dealing with information or are we exclusively in entertainment territory? Like, I want the driest news broadcast possible. I don't want to remember the anchor's name. Regardless, I completely forgot what I was talking about. I got lost in the sauce in a big way. Thank you for in indulging me on that one. I'm just being straight up with you. Whatever. We, we dipped like Inception, like eight dreams deep. We went on too many tangents. I got lost. I don't even know if I'm awake right now. 
I need Cobb to utilize his spinning top. That's right, I remember Leonardo DiCaprio's name from the movie Inception. It's a good movie. All it, no, it's a great movie. I know there's Inception backlash. I still think... You know, here's the thing. You know why there's Inception backlash? Is because it's like the favored movie, or at least was for a long time, for my exact demographic. Guys with glasses who were born between like 1985 and 1995 and listen to LCD sound system. <laughs> that being said, if you're in that demographic, that movie owns. I love the, like, Chris Nolan, I know, is, oh, Nolan Circle Jerk, Nolan Circle Jerk. I, I really like Christopher Nolan for what he is. First off, I think, um, if you think that Christopher Nolan always makes movies that are, that appear to be smart, but are actually not, I really encourage you to watch uh, Insomnia, starring Al Pacino and Robin Williams. It's a, uh, a relatively, relatively, it's a relatively melancholic, slow-paced uh, thriller, for a lack of a better word. I think thriller is probably fair there. You know, nobody goes into outer space. Nobody travels through time. Nobody has, you know, lost all of their long-term memories. You know, you get the idea. Um, that being said, I really like Christopher Nolan. Oh, that, sorry, I forgot to mention, Insomnia does have Batman in it, though. No, not Christian Bale, literally Batman shows. I'm just joking. Anyway, I, I, whether you disagree, you find it comical or what, I really like an action movie that has one big-brained gimmick. <laughs> I know that's the caricature of, of Christopher Nolan, is like, we're making an action movie. But also, you know, he can jump very high. Every time he dies, he comes back to life, you know? But I kind of like that. I feel like they're, they're more accessible action movies. Like, the, the problem that a lot of people have with action movies, that I want to be very clear, I do not agree with at all. I love a quote-unquote dumb action movie. I think people have a great disrespect towards action movies. And... I, I'm, I'm being 100% sincere, you can tell, I'm getting a little passionate, right? I think that action movies are like the most underrated genre of movie across the board. Except maybe for foreign films that a lot of people won't see just because they have subtitles. But you know, I, I, I'm being 100% serious when I say like a, a quote-unquote dumb action movie that's like well choreographed, well put together, it gives me the same, like, depth of satisfaction that a well-crafted drama does. I think there's a lot of bias. Like, people, uh... They don't have, uh... The, the movie I always come back to, and this is not dangiesling.com slash movies, me making fun of Dan for giving this a 4 out of 10. Mission Impossible Fallout, I legitimately think is one of the most well-made films of the of the 2010s it probably would not make like my top 20 but i think it's really really good and i think that movie gets way more i mean people like it don't get me wrong but a lot of people like whenever you hear people talk about an action movie if they like it they always have to like defend themselves in the criticism of it to begin with they're like yeah i liked it but at the same time i will admit there was a little gratuitous and i did see one of the twists coming and i mean come on are we expected to believe that tom cruise could really blah blah you know you get the they always it comes with so many asterisks if you like a drama, you're like, oh, it's really good. It affected me. You don't have to be like, you know, Meryl Streep's hair wasn't right in that one scene. But with action movies, it's like, there's a... And I'm starting to get to the point. Thank you for bearing with me here. I think there's almost a presumption with action movies that if you like an action movie, you must be stupid. So whenever people actually like an action movie and... and talk about it, they have to say, like, I know you might think I'm stupid because I think this movie that has kung fu and guns in it is good, but, like, I'm telling you, it's actually, like, it's a good movie, like, it's a... 
I think people sleep on action movies. I was amazed. It, and again, I want to be clear, I know that this movie is well liked, but... I was amazed at some of the criticisms I saw... Oh, sorry, I forgot I had marked. <laughs> about John Wick 3. I love John Wick 1. I really like John Wick 2. I think John Wick 2 is still very, very good. John Wick 3, I was like, if you like the first two, how could you not like this one? I was stunned to see people be like, this movie is ridiculous. Yeah! Like, you, you think... And uh, hold on, I'm gonna get a little bit... This is an ad hominem attack. I apologize if this applies to you. It's not meant to be rude, it's just the only way I know how to express myself after a life lived online. The problem is, you think you're smart. Because in John Wick 3, you're like, well, I was on board for everything before, but this is ridiculous. Well, the actual problem is that you didn't realize right off the bat that in John Wick 1, he's already a superhero. Nothing in John Wick 1 is plausible. The man takes like 20 bullets to his ribcage. They just throw in like an air of fake plausibility. Like, it, it doesn't matter that it's... It, it doesn't need to be realistic necessarily to be good because movies it can't be critiqued from an objectivist perspective. Then the, You know, anyway. It just wasn't believable when... Iron Man fired that photon blast out of his wrist cannon. I mean, what's supposed to power that? The world supply of tritium is... Uh, you get the idea. So, I'm out here. If you don't like action movies, whatever. I'm just out here trying to combat this... Uh, what I consider to be a, an incorrect stereotype. That, that action movies are innately, you know, less meritous than dramas. Like, sometimes... and. I always couch this. I like some snobby movies, okay? Some of them are a little too snobby. Have you seen High Life, the Robert Pattinson uh, sci-fi movie about like a colony prison ship? Um, it, it's on Amazon Prime Video. It was very well respected by the critics. That is definitely past my dividing line of where me and the critics agree. When they're like, Rushmore, a delightful little uh, harpsichord-infused romp through the life of a teenage outcast. I'm like, you're absolutely right. This is a beautiful movie. Anyone who doesn't like it is an idiot. When they're like, High Life, a meditative thought on what it means to be a father in an unknown time. I'm like, no, you are out of your mind. This is the most boring movie I've ever seen. I, I enjoyed it zero. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not good. It's rather like I just, I'm unqualified to critique it. But, so, I, I want to be clear, I, I like, I like movies, oftentimes, that are considered smart. I would consider myself probably snobbier than the average film goer. However, I am also amazed at people that are like, you know, I, I do think there's a certain element of like, it, the more fun a movie is, and the easier it is to enjoy, the worse it must be. Uh, if everybody can get to the meat of what makes this movie so entertaining and enjoyable then you know or like the idea that like some introspection and melancholy is like more rewarding in some way or more valid than like you know just being stoked you're seeing a, a really cool and well choreographed you know fight scene or you know chase scene or something like that anyway i don't know maybe that's not actually the case and i've just been preaching to the choir for the last 15 minutes if that's the case i apologize what I would say is, you know, watch Mission Impossible Fallout. Watch uh, the John Wick trilogy, soon to be quadrilogy, I think. Watch uh, Crank 1 and Crank 2. I still believe Crank 1 and Crank 2 are the, like... I don't think they're the best action movies ever made. I think they're some of the action movies that got done the dirtiest, though. Every review I saw of Crank 1 and Crank 2 was like, this is just stupid. And I'm like, yeah. You know what else is stupid? That Monty Python sketch where the waiter goes, Ah, please, sir, it is way far thin. I mean, why would the dude continue to eat when he's so full? It doesn't make any sense. But you know what? It's a classic. Lots of stupid things are very, very great. <laughs> In my opinion. In fact, some stupid things are like the most amazing things of all. Like deep fried corn based snacks. There's nothing smart about those. Yeah, we put artificial cheese on a fried corn meal. Why, I never. 
Doritos. Anyway. I feel like I've uh, not gotten to a single point in this episode. I don't think I've made one point over the course of the last 30 minutes and 9 seconds. Um, and you know what? I'm okay with that. Because I don't lose. <laughs> this run was, was set from the get. And uh, happy to keep it going here. Happy to keep it rolling. And uh, I gotta admit, when an enemy stays in exactly the same place... Marked is very, very good. I did miss my opportunity to say, oh, hi, Marked. Get me out of here. Dude, we're putting together one heck of a run for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Really, thanks for watching. I will see you next time, and I'll see you in the comments. See ya.